Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and we were in conversation with Dr. Firuza Parek, a very interesting conversation around fertility and IVF. So I got all of your questions and I was obliged to ask them to ma'am. So let's continue. So I want to start with, I think so many of you are aware there's so many movies coming around IVF with Vicky Donor, Good News and now even Bad News. All of them giving this myth to everyone. This is uh, somebody else's baby. This is not your own baby. This is going to be a mixing of the sperm. So how true is all that or is it just some filmy? No, Dr. Reema, there have been instances in the past where there has been a mix up of egg and sperm and embryos. And in fact, there have been some very famous lawsuits in other countries where a woman has given birth to twins of different color. Now that becomes very emotionally, very traumatic for the couple. It also becomes very traumatic for the person whose eggs or embryos are mixed up or the sperm is mixed up. So in the laboratory, we have many, many ways of preventing this. We have what is called a dual business system where for every procedure done, the procedure, the contents, the containers, the test tubes are all double checked by two people. Today, we have alarms, we have barcodes, we have AI performing tools that will make sure that such mistakes don't happen. In our lab, we have enabled all these methodologies so that we prevent such a thing happening because it can be extremely traumatic and it's an irreversible thing once a baby is born yeah. of course it becomes your baby whatever wherever the baby comes from but it can be very traumatic for everyone for the hospital for the ivf clinic mm. for the baby for the parents so such mistakes should can do occur can occur but there is every way every possible way to prevent these so i think i would like to highlight what mayam is trying to say ivf baby is their own baby many people think that ivf se hua hai they've taken it from somewhere it's a donor egg it's a donor sperm but it's not always like that and i think technology has all taken over and now you can definitely have your own child right yes you can and you should when biologically you're capable of doing that and what is the success rate of this IVF? Like, you know, how many cycles will one have to go through to get a success? Is there a number? So the success of IVF depends, as I told you earlier, on many factors. Some of the factors are age of the woman. Even the age of the man is important. The hormones that are present in the woman, like the anti-Mullerian hormone, the ovarian reserve, the lifestyle of the couple is extremely important. Are the health comorbidities? like diabetes, hypertension, immune conditions, all these can cause a problem with lower success rate. IVF success can range anywhere from 5% as high as 60% if you are enabling using PGT. It can even go up to 80% if you are using donor eggs and surrogacy. So it will vary. There is no standard. But by and large, it is the age of the woman and also the age of the man and the quality of the sperm that will determine the success rates. And I would really like to ask you this question because many people blame infertility absolutely on women. And you just mentioned even the age of the man is important, the sperm quality is important. Does it really matter? Because Indian society believes the fertility, the entire load is only on women and men have nothing to do with it. So Dr. Reema, that is changing a bit. I remember in my early days of practice, more than 30 years ago, it would just be the woman coming, the man would be too busy or right. sometimes, you know, I would see a big file of uh, all investigations done, but there would be no semen analysis in that. Right. But fortunately for the woman, this is changing. Today, we see husbands usually accompanying their wives. We see mothers and mother-in-laws coming and even telling us that, look, we don't want to stress our uh, couple even if they don't have a baby we are okay with that but we want them to be happy so i think this whole scenario around having a baby has slightly changed particularly in the indian scenario and the ethos of having a baby has changed which i think is very encouraging 
Correct. So how many times can one try for IVF? Like, so if one cycle fails, what is next? First of all, if a cycle fails, one has to understand why it has failed. Because the answer in getting success will depend on why a certain procedure has not worked. If the correct injections, hormones are used, if the health of the couple is good, if the vitamins in the body are good, if there are no other factors which can contribute to failure are negated, then the chances improve. So a negative cycle or a failure in a cycle can teach us a lot to get success. Uh, there is no magic number as to how many times a couple can do. It depends on many factors, the emotional status, the physical status, the financial status. It is a myth that doing many more than two cycles can cause cancer or it can have detrimental effects. Today, there are established studies. Earlier, there was a fear that IVF can cause breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer. There are many, many good studies that have debunked this. Of course, if a woman has a propensity towards breast cancer or a particular type of cancer, or if the couple has a propensity towards a genetic condition, then yes, this can be perpetuated. But by and large, IVF done with professional individuals, with good doctors, with a good scientific background and ethical practice does not see an increase in complications or in certain fears that it will cause cancer and other debilitating diseases. Okay. And can you get pregnant naturally after doing an IVF? Oh, or? we see that all the time. <laughs> we see people who we tell them to adopt and when they adopt, the stress is gone and in two months, three right. months, the woman is pregnant. I have had patients whom we have recommended surrogacy to for many conditions and many reasons. While the surrogate is pregnant, the woman comes and says, you know, doc, I've not got a period now. I think I'm in menopause. And then we listen to the heartbeats and the woman is already four months pregnant. So nature surprises us, IVF surprises us. I have had men who have less than 0.1 million sperm. They are ready to use donor sperm and they're naturally pregnant. <laughs> so in IVF, there is no 0%, there is no 100%, but there is always hope. And if one is positive, this can definitely be converted into happiness with having a baby. Absolutely. I think IVF is magic and these are the magicians who, you know, make it possible for so many of them. It's sometimes so miraculous, the results, you know, it can be overwhelming, it can be stressful, you get anxious, but I think in the end, having a healthy baby is what, what everybody wants. So what kind of support do we get during this cycle? Because it can be quite tedious, it can be, you know, frustrating, even emotionally, you know, physically also. So what kind of support do we get from these uh, centers or IVF centers? How do they support us in this IVF journey? So it is extremely important, first of all, for the family, the immediate family to support a couple. The couple should not be secretive, should not worry that, look, we are doing IVF and we have to keep it a secret. No, I suggest to all couples to be vulnerable. If you're having an emotion which is overwhelming you, Please talk to your friend, please talk to your immediate family, your siblings, your parents, your parents-in-law. That really helps. Of course, we always have counselling sessions. We have a counsellor with us, both a psychological counsellor, genetics counsellor. And I personally have done courses in personal counselling. And it is very important for the doctor to listen. It's not just, IVF is not just taking an egg and a sperm and making an embryo. IVF goes much beyond that. We have to cater to the emotional and physical needs of a couple. So this kind of support is very important. And of course, the husband supporting the wife, the wife supporting the husband is very important. What I, I tell couples who are undergoing IVF is prepare for a month before doing IVF. Be emotional supports be rocks to each other where you are pillars to one another take the help of family friends go for movies go for walks do things together joke around don't take ivf as a burden as a task and those 15 20 days will go very fast without stress be conscious and mindful of what you eat what you drink hydrate yourself well if you have questions don't be worried about 
asking the doctor never fear that a question will be stupid or the doctor will laugh at you it's never the case go to a doctor who has the patience to listen to your questions and who answers all your questions so i believe that your doctor is your best guide for your physical and emotional support go to a doctor who gives you time who listens to your difficulties because it's very important to express what you are going through and who better than your doctor can guide you a doctor should be able to give the couple enough time to process what is required to be realistic not just to give a rosy picture of ivf because ivf is not just taking an egg and sperm and making an embryo it goes way beyond that i wish all of you a very pleasant journey to your path to parenthood thank you ma'am for that insightful session one last question that how much do i have to wait till i jump to ivf or how many years should a couple take to you know decide that okay we need some help should we go for an ivf so how much is that time period so the who earlier had the definition of infertility that if you are having unplanned intercourse and not able to conceive for 2 years then you should seek help but now they have revised the definition so what they say that is irrespective of your age if you have been trying for a year and not able to conceive you shouldn't waste time because remember the time that you are most fertile is between the age of 24 and 34 so don't waste the precious years if you are having regular sex and if you feel there is a difficulty and you are month after month you are not missing your periods or you have that fear go to an ivf specialist they will be the right people to guide you as to whether you should start treatment or wait so if you are having difficulty what i would suggest you go to a specialist get the basic test done like a semen analysis like an amh basic test for sugar for your blood pressure see if there are any other immunological conditions see if there is a history of infertility see if your periods pattern of the periods have changed those things should alert you and if you are more than 35 do not waste time even though 6 months are precious if you happen to do an amh and if your amh comes low please visit your doctor at the earliest I think thank you ma'am so much from so many of our followers who are I think misguided or you know confused with the myths that what to do what test what should I do where should I go I think I can vouch for Dr Firuza please approach ma'am if you have any kind of doubts you can put your doubts even in the comment section and ma'am will help you out for sure thank you once again ma'am for this insightful session I'm sure it is going to help millions and millions of people Thank you very much I really enjoyed this session and I'd like to end with one thing knowledge is power and use that knowledge to your advantage thank you so much